Sorry, uh, two quick announcements before I get started. Uh, first is, if anyone wants an, oh, that's right. uh, if anyone wants um, an extra mug or didn't get a mug, um, we have some available. So uh, they're in the back. There's some boxes. The second is, if you're staying for the, the um, collaboration summit, you do have to pick up a new badge. So go uh, to the registration after lunch today, not before lunch. Um, and, uh, and they can give you a new badge for tomorrow. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me now? So today I'm going to talk about Gdevelop. It's a talk I've, I've made like different times already. And well, I don't know if someone here has uh, listened to it. It's more or less the same thing, but I mean, like it's an awesome software, and I really like it. I love to show it to everyone. Like uh, an ego in answer that always helps, right? So, here, um, who is the developer here in the room? <laughs> okay, there are, there are quite a lot. It, it helps when you're showing K development, there are programmers, it's, it's quite better because <laughs> otherwise you feel like lonely and <laughs> that you're talking about something that doesn't really find. But anyway, it's, it's, it's good. So, what Git develop is an IDE. I, 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 I put this slide because it's something I like to emphasize. The, the thing about Git develop is that when we are developing, we have like a lot of tools, a lot of, of infrastructure that when we are coding, we have to have on our head and know how it works and interact with it. Uh, usually the approach for, oh, usually the approach for, um, when people want to use an IDE is because they don't know the tools and say, well, if I use that IDE, then I won't have to know all these tools. But that's not entirely the approach that we have uh, taken on Kdevelop. Uh, Kdevelop is uh, trying to uh, integrate the tools in a way that someone who knows how to use them can take full profit of it and can use all the information that we have around like in a centralized place and try to help them with it. The, the important thing here is that when we are coding as well as we are like using our computer in any kind of task, there are a lot of things that we are doing that everyone will know that when he's doing it, he's thinking, wow, this can be done by a, by a computer, but I'm still doing it, like when you copy paste a lot of stuff or, or well, in the specific case of C++, you modify a function definition and then you have to go to the declaration and modify it. And it's some repeated information that it's a computer who can do it, but it's us who are doing it because it's something that the language needs and, well, we have to put up with it because it's a tool. But in the end, it's something that it can be done by, by a computer, and we're using a computer, so why not get the computer to do it? So, uh, in Kdevelop, uh, you can use it like for a lot of things. You can use it uh, to develop <coughs> on C++ mostly, or PHP also. But the thing is that we are like C++ developers, KD developers, Q developers, and well, we've, we have adapted it like a lot for or kind of needs. So we have uh, like full support for or well the tools that we use usually like C++ like cute extensions on our code also GDB, CMake and Make which are the <coughs> most common tools also Git and SVN are supported but <coughs> so first of all uh, there's something uh, really interesting on when we are working on an ID, which is the version control integration. That's I think it's it's quite interesting because uh, version control offers us a lot of tools that are really interesting, but usually we don't uh, use them a lot because well, the workflow would be like let's move to the console, then uh, call whatever command we, we have there and like analyze the result and go back to the editor. And that's a like very forced workflow. For instance, there's the blaming functions. 
if we can embed that on our editor, it's great, and we're doing it on KDevelop. Also, like cloning projects, getting projects, it's also integrated. We can commit or check for differences in KDevelop. It's easy, it's fast, and it's nice. Um, but I will show you later because uh, because that way you will understand better what I'm talking about. Well, I missed some slides here. No. Well, I, I would like to talk also about uh, our project integration. The thing is that uh, also when we are working on, on a project, we want uh, to know what uh, what does the project have all in all? When we're working on a, on a program, we have always a lot of files, a lot of files that interact in very different ways. And the beautiful thing here is that all these ways are very well specified by the language that we're using, the build tool that we're using, and all this information, we can use it to uh, create a better development uh, experience just by using all this information ourselves also and try to use it to help the, the user. And finally also the um, language integrations which means that we also read all the code in our project and we make up like a huge database of information. Here the, the workflow in, in develop terms would be like we import the project, we gather all the well, case develop gathers all the information automatically. You don't have to do anything, and and well, in the end, you get like K develop has all the information, and while you're coding, K develop will try to help you in a way or, or another, so that uh, he can provide you the best out of it, <coughs> and. Uh, well, as I was saying before, the future, the thing is that we've been stabilizing a lot. We had like a year ago our 4.0 version. We are on our 4.2 right now. 4.0 was a little unstable as always. The 4.0 versions are, 4.1 was quite better. Also, we added some features that were quite needed and were not <coughs> done yet, like its support. Then we got the for the the two version, which was mostly bug fixing and well new find and replace dialogue, which was quite nice. And well now we are heading for for the three like quite soon, and I guess it's it's gonna be not quite nice in terms of development. I would like to see K develop like better. Uh, VCS integration so that like you can analyze your project history and your project state in better ways that we are doing right now. Right now we are using like the tools that um, our VCS to, um, well software or infrastructure provides, but we are not like extracting a lot of data out of it. And well, I think that we can do quite a lot of work there. Uh, other things that are being worked on is like Python support and Ruby support that actually are being done by uh, people outside of our core K develop thing team. And it's something that's really nice because, well, it gets uh, people to understand our architecture and gets people to, uh, <coughs> to know our code base and hopefully uh, have new developers eventually, or just the language support, which is something like really nice to have and really good, and that helps everyone. Actually, our biggest feature requests usually are just, do you have support for this language support or that language support? So having development in these areas is quite nice. So right now, I'm going to to show some of uh, our features. I'm going to show it on C++ only because, well, it's what I am more used to. But as I said, we work on PHP as well. And most of these people, like, 
most of these features are translat translatable. And well, the thing is that whenever we keep adding new feature, well, languages like Python or Ruby or anything that comes up in the future, uh, we're gonna get those too. So let's see what <coughs> what we have. Okay, that uh, project is, is one that we created for last academy's talk. It's um, with some examples to show you the the workflow that we have, the features that we can provide in in KDevelop, and well, later I will show you if we if we have uh, time uh, how to get a project and start working on it using KDevelop to work on KDE, which is or why we are here right now. <coughs> For but before we start like sharing everything, uh, here's like a plain text code that, well, if we open it with a raw text editor is what we would get. Um, the thing is that it's black and white and it's ugly and the thing is, is that it doesn't help. Uh, to our like eyes, it's it's really useful to, to see that there are different colors and the color have meanings and to be able to use these colors to link like the different, the different well, meanings that we have inside. Uh, the thing is that languages are very semantic themselves. They provide us a lot of information. And by not using this information, we are like not being up to the user's expectations somehow. So uh, this is black and white. This is ugly. And this doesn't help the developer. Um, even the people who's not coding usually will see that this wouldn't like work quite well and wouldn't help that much. Then here we have some code as uh, a skate uh, or like the eye or image would uh, normally highlight it. It's it's a very simple um, highlighting because it's just highlighting the keywords that that the that the support knows what they mean, but for instance, the, the editor doesn't know what all this stuff means, and it just leaves it as uh, black text, and that's why what we get. And actually, here the the highlighting that we have is like very basic because I mean we all know what int means and what int is, but Maybe, I don't know, knowing what um, <laughs> font one or two means would be like more useful, right? So this is how we present this same code in kdevelop. As you can see, all the variables have a different color. Here we have the rainbow, that's a little joke uh, we had some, some time on, on IRC, but and it's really nice to see that in our codes, every like this variable has the same color, and just with a quick look, we can see that it's the the same thing, and it it's linked somehow. Also, we have like a lot of um, navigating uh, features, like we can navigate from one to the different uses of a variable, which is nice because, well, in this code it's quite simple, it's not that useful, but in the real world it's, it's very powerful to be able to start jumping from one place to the other in a way that it's like semantically what you're doing and not saying like control O, open another file and then just look for the thing I was doing. And because by doing that you're just losing your time by doing something that a uh, computer can do as I was saying before and you're not being productive in the end. Oh, and I didn't say that before, but if you have any question or anything, you can just stop me and ask me. 
minus 5. Um, as you can see here also, we're having different uh, colors also for different kinds of functions, like methods have are like uh, brown and the local call, well, normal functions are, have like variable like coloring. Well, the thing is that we all these um, well structure that we've created is following this this idea of just look into it and just try to understand it. The other thing that's really interesting is to see that we have this highlighting well this. Um, well, boxes here, the tool tips that contain uh, some of the information that we've uh, used, uh, we've gathered, and so that the user can just use it, like uh, using it to jump to the declaration of a variable. Here it will be more in interesting. Here it just jumps. The thing is that if it was in another file, it would be a little more spectacular, maybe. But the thing is that everything's linked, and KDevelop knows everything. The the thing how it works is that we have um, like a database that we have called uh, new chain, which stands for declaration use chain, and we are storing like all this information. Every declaration has many users and it's like stored for all the projects. So we have all the information for anything that we can reach. But uh, as I said, uh, this is just for reading the code, for navigating through the code. But we have more information like here. OK, let's see that code. Here we are de de declaring um, uh, an iterator, the K developer already knows what the iterator, iterator type, so why not use it to tell the, the editor, like, well, the user, that we want to instantiate, like, the, the variable. It's, it's really nice because uh, we don't have to write everything. It's nice because we know that we're doing it right because KDevlet is, is very smart. And, well, if we have the information, why not use it? Here it would have the same. We know that i is an integer because here we have an integer being assigned to it so that we can just use it to declare it, right? With include, it happens more or less the same. We have parts already the the Q application uh, class, so we know that Q application alert is is declared there. So so we can trigger K develop to to add the the include that that we need, and it automatically uh, shows the code completion and everything for the Q application class, which is what we. Have we're asking for. Also this, here we can find how we have all the information on our project and on all the classes that we're, we're using because we have access to all this kind of information. Something like that we can also do is that when a variable, as we saying, I was saying before, when a variable is has to be declared, we are not uh, forced to have it as a local variable. It can be just also a member. So why not have um, let the user to decide what kind of variable we want it to be? So we can use um, the declare it as private, and it's been added here like automatically without us caring whatsoever and well it just works and the good thing here is that we don't have to worry again about doing something that 
I mean, uh, computer can do, which is something that as simple as that, and that makes us lose our precious developer time. And well, the same would happen with uh, methods. We, we have a, a function. We have it. we know that it has to be declared. So let the developer declare it automatically. Um, there's something I, I didn't say before, but that I think it's really nice is that everything that is being done or that can be done in key develop can be done with key bindings. We, you don't have to actually use the mouse, like never. If you want to, you can always also, but well, we understand that someone who's coding and using a program like that will like to be able to use the the keyboard he's already using. So, uh, yeah, as you can see, mo most of these things that are can be done with the keyboard without mo moving the mouse. And, well, I think it's really nice. And, yeah, to end this example, uh, another thing that we do usually when we are re-implementing a class is to ask to re-implement one of these uh, parents methods so we can just trigger the class and it asks us which one do we want to override. In the case of a, uh, an abstract class that that has methods that we are forced to to re implement we, we have them on top. Then we have the others that are just virtual we can just add them as well, and it, it works. It's really nice because in this case, you don't have to go to the documentation, then copy it, or which is something that I, what I used to do before having that feature. You can just ask uh, key develop which one, which ones do you have, and well, browse for its name or. What, what it was needed. Um, also, one of the most important features that people uh, look for in an ID is code completion. And of course, like because we are so good, um, we can do that very well. So. Uh, oh. Uh, for example, here we have a queue object. We want to check what uh, what methods we can call here. Here we have all the all the met methods that are available. Also, we can click on any of them, and since we have all the queue documentation integrated, also we can read what uh, the queue developers would wrote for us to know what the function does, so well, we have it here, everything, we can read it, we can just use it, and and it's great. So, for example, we can here call children, and well, it's all good. You could do like that, then declare, and keep working. Uh, there's a kind of a joke that we have with a, with a friend in, in Katie Spain that he says, he said sometimes that you can uh, write an application just by pressing control space, which is like the auto completion function that we have. <laughs> well, that's not entirely true because it could be like a, an application without any logic. But the thing is that you can do like a lot of stuff there just by using our facilities, the, the tools that we provide, and, and that is good. Additionally, we have uh, security integration. That means that uh, we understand what yeah. signals and slots are, and we can hint about them the same way that we can hint about C++ stuff. So in this case, we could, OK, we can remove it first. Okay. 
here okay develop knows that we we are on a common a connect call and we have different slots and he is hinting us about the slots that okay develop on that found out that we have so that we can use it also it uh, provides the possibility to create uh, a different slot with uh, whatever name we want or, or in this case <coughs> he's telling us to use just the same name that uh, the sign up has just well because some people like it like that and we can respect it and well uh, another problem that a lot of, of IDEs have is that they don't really support uh, preprocessed on macros that well. Uh, the thing is that uh, we do it and we do it quite well in the sense that all our code is being parsed the same way that the compiling compiler will be using it, like just first uh, passing the preprocessor, then using the C++ parts that, so we, we get the same information that the compiler would have. So here we have this macro that that is getting a queue object so that when we go to, when we trigger code completion on, on the macro, it gets the queue object here and we get all the methods that a queue object provides. So it's so good and nice and we didn't have to worry about it. And something that I'm not, okay, I'll show you in some of these. Yes, well, the thing is that we have also to play support and it works good. And we can use um, a smart pointers like pointer. That one is more smart, so we can use that one. Uh, we could use it with few objects. Well. So now B, it's, uh, it's pointing to a few object, and when we trigger the, the code completion on B, it knows that it, it's re-implementing the operator arrow, and it's resolves the type that it's re being returned and then we oh provide yes. the code completion for that and that's actually good. wrong there. You so got one star to <coughs> sorry? Move the star. Oh of course. <laughs> yeah. It shouldn't be working. <laughs> <Oops>. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That could be like most of the features that we have for for code completion. Uh, well, as you can see around, there's a lot of tools that, well, when you're using the the develop, you will start to to use and to understand. Uh, well, the important ones are of course the the documentation stuff that well, it, now we provide these. Good help, man. Documentation, CMake documentation that's integrated and is integrated on the language too. So there's all the the interaction being worked already, and that's why when we hover here, we can uh, read the documentation that we're getting from <coughs> the cute people. And also, well, if we use CMake, we can get the CMake documentation and everything. <coughs> also another important tool view is the project. It's, it has all the pro the, the tree information. Uh, well, here we have the things that every time we're done, we press the, the, build, the build function that uh, will be called. And also, of course, well, this this has been like requested a lot by our users, and then we ended up by adding it. 
I don't know if it's that useful because I don't really use it, but it's all the classes that on our project with all the inheritance and everything. And well, it works. And well, I still have time, right? Mm -hmm. Just counting the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you still have 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Okay, now we'll try to import a KD project. Okay, as a part of my last year Google Summer of Code, I added this like wizard here that lets us get uh, any KD project aut automatically. Well, it's nice because that way you don't have to go and check what's the URL. You can just go here and ask for, you know, algebra. I'm not being random here. And just click get, or you can just Git clone your project here, you can put the URL and click get and well it, it will be imported also. So we will use a KD project. Oh, I, I will be using Calgebra because it's rather small and and it shouldn't take a lot of time. You can see here that it's cloning. Okay, maybe it was already closed. Well, it's here. You can select the CMake list because we're importing the CMake list. And press next and well, finish. It's a normal wizard with not a lot of difficulty. And the thing here is that right now the project is reading, well, KDevelop is reading all the project files, all the CMake list files, and executing them. So that uh, we can gather all the information, like include directories, C++ uh, plus definitions, and all this stuff that uh, <coughs> that well, CMA provides us. That enables us the possibility to have um, to be able to parse all the C++ plus files the same way that our compiler would. And as we can see here with this three percent, well, now it's key develop that it's parsing the C++ code. But actually, it's already useful, and, and we can start just using it. We can see here, for example, the key algebra file. It's the same file that I was using yesterday for the line install. <coughs> uh, well, the thing is that now we already have the code highlighting and all the features I was talking before and without any configuration, without worrying the more little thing about it, we have it working and and it works fine and great. So we can just jump in that function <coughs> and then kdevelop just pods us there and here we can start like jumping through the code like saying what are the uses of exits? Well, we, we can see them here. We can keep jumping with our keyboard. There's uh, all the key bindings here. We can use them too, and they work great. <coughs> and well, in the end, the thing here is that it's really easy to get to understand the code like really fast. And it's one of the big problems that we have when we start to use another project. And it's not because you can be a bad programmer or something like that, but there's a learning curve you know, when, whenever you start using a, or um, trying to contribute into a, a newer project. And if, well, the IDE is sh showing us all the information and telling us where, where is everything, well, it helps a lot. Well, one of the big problems you have uh, usually is whenever, for example, there's a class that it's it's declared in another file and it doesn't have the same name and you have to use <coughs> look for it. Usually you would grab all the project files. You don't need to do that with kdevelop. kdevelop is doing it and it's doing it the right way because it's semantically correct. It's, uh, and it's just awesome. <laughs> is this the way to, to see who has written this code? 
So if I want to, I, I see this function and function. Yeah, I it's, don't it's, it's it. a very good question. It's a Git project. We have Git integration. So we have the annotation thing. And we can just see. Oh, nice. Actually, I'm everyone here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now, now could, could I send the, the author of this part of the code an email asking a question directly from uh, k yeah. Well, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's one of the, our. <laughs> <laughs> is our one of our plans of the future, as I was saying before, better VCS integration, but it's like this kind of stuff that we are doing really well and we can get a lot done. And not just that very case, but like uh, the case to see how the history has behaved on time, or well, also to see building regressions, you can just go back and to the future, we can do all this kind of stuff. So we just need someone with good ideas, and not that we don't have, but <laughs> but we have. We are looking forward, or I'm looking forward to see really smart things going on in the future here, because we have we now have support for very important parts of our development process, and I think that we can make. We're already making a difference because I think we are doing stuff that not any other ID can do or is doing right now, maybe because they don't want to, but we can make a difference by providing better VCS integration because it's, it's not something that proprietary IDs are doing that much and the free ones are quite green in that area as well. Another question, do, do you have support for refactoring? We have some uh, refactoring support, like, okay, I'll show you one. Uh, it was, uh, no, I got stuck. Well, we have that here. There's the rename for, um, you go to any variable and you can rename it. We have the create new class, which Prints a new file with whatever you want. It's quite com uh, quite sophisticated because it lets you um, activate like all the abstract methods that you want to re-implement if it's done doing it. Also, yeah, the moving to source. This one is quite nice. Okay, let's do the test here. Let me remove that first. Here we could add uh, a method that is not that useful, but uh, I don't know, is equal to dot, right? And everybody knows that putting functions in .h files is something bad, so we can do here. Uh, right here, move into source and just the function code has left somewhere and we can just jump to the body and we see it's here. That's one of our code refactoring, uh, but also rename, create class, document declaration that it adds the, it adds the, yeah, the oxygen thing. The thing is that we don't have that much features on here yet, but all the architecture is there, and if anybody wants to, then he can just do it, and we will be happy to accept their pads and, and ideas, of course. Do you guys uh, come up with, so all, all the, the semantic and lexical analysis you guys do, is that is that something that was done by you guys, or do you hook into some other library, or how, did, how is that created? No, no, well, it was, is the same C++ parser that we had for KDevelop3, but on steroids. So, so it's just enhancing the, the parser from 3? Yes. Okay. Well, it's, yeah, improving it. <coughs> well, there's uh, somebody else in the IRC with two more questions. The first one is, how does Alex see K develop position versus Eclipse? Well, it's a very different project. It doesn't have anything to do, in my opinion. K Eclipse is a big project coming from 
a lot of big companies and they're happy about it. So yeah, mm -hmm. just keep using it. But mm -hmm. I think that KDevelop is awesome. And Eclipse, Eclipse, I don't think it has this awesomeness part. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, now again, I mean, I'm a developer. I mean, what can I say here? Uh, last year in Posdem, I had this question saying that Eclipse has like 100 developers or something like that. We are like eight people, now maybe four. So yeah, it's a very different project. We're, we're taking it forward with a lot of, of enthusiasm and we like a lot what we are doing. And I think we're doing a really good job. Uh, in the end, in, and in my opinion, the, the thing about if a program is good or bad, it's the end user feeling and we're having like a very good response on KDevelop. Eclipse is being used more like by big companies who want like <coughs> mostly a Java environment and well we don't have Java support there so I'm not gonna try to compete with them. Eclipse has C++ support and I've been told that it's probably not that good uh, as ours. So I mean, it's very different for projects. I'm actually that. Is it available on Windows for the KDE Windows distribution? Um, yeah, actually the thing is that none of our KDevelop user um, developers are using Windows because we believe it's not that good. So uh, <laughs> we're not doing it personally, but there is people from the KDE Windows uh, team who have worked on it and I've been told that it works. Somehow there are some little problems, but you can use it. I don't. Re I can't really tell what's the exact state, but what I can tell is that there is someone who's working on it and finding what's the little glitches that they have. And eventually, like in one space, we could have something. Well, the big problem here is that uh, it's quite hard to get Windows people to it use the KD installer, so I'm not sure if it's going to be that much adapted there, but okay, why not? You had another question, right? Yes. Yeah, sure. Okay. So anybody has another question? Nobody has. So well, thank you for listening to me, and well, I hope to get some of you to use KDevelop sometime. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> and, yeah.